very happy Christmas to everyone. I have here our Advent wreath with at last all five candles lit. The In my version of the wreath anyway, the four white ones plus the red one, which would be of course uh, three purples, a pink and a white. But I've uh, lit in addition to the previous four candles, the red candle, the central candle, uh, reminding us of Jesus uh, being at the center of the whole celebration of Christmas, the whole reason for the season, as the old tag puts it. Right, remind us then of, the, uh, of these five candles. Of course, the, the first one uh, for the patriarchs, reminding us of the faith of people like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Second one, the uh, second purple candle, or here the second uh, a white candle, uh, or sometimes it's the blue candle actually, reminding us of the uh, hope which uh, we read in the words of the great prophets like Isaiah, pointing forward to the, the coming of the Messiah. And then thirdly, in the third Sunday of Advent, we recall, of course, the, the joy which the whole Christmas season brings upon us, and the joy, for example, of, of the little baby in the womb of, uh, Mar uh, of, uh, of Elizabeth as, as Mary visited her, uh, leaping for joy at the proximity of uh, cousin Jesus, who was going to uh, do so much uh, for the salvation of humanity. And then the fourth uh, candle, of course, last Sunday for the fourth Sunday of Advent, being the candle of love, recalling uh, the love of the Virgin Mary herself, the love that impelled her to take upon the great task of becoming the God-bearer, the, uh, the, the mother of, of Jesus himself. And then this morning, again, we think particularly of Jesus. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, King of Peace. To you be praise and glory forever. The new light of your incarnate word gives gladness in our sorrow and a presence in our isolation. Fill our lives with your light until they overflow with gladness and praise. Blessed be God forever. God our Father, today the Saviour is born and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy to live in the light of your Son and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Lord Jesus, light of light, you have come among us. Help us to live by your light, to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Welcome everyone to our Christmas Day Holy Communion service. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Continue on page 201. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us, and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You who are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We now turn to the uh, Collect for Christmas Day. Take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we turn to our epistle reading, which comes from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearance of our great God and Saviour Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. Luke, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, for there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Angel of the Lord appeared to them. Glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to man, on whom his favour rests.
So there we have the familiar tale of uh, shepherds announcing the birth on Bethlehem hillsides. And we've often heard sermons, I've often preached them, about uh, shepherds being untrustworthy messengers, people whom we wouldn't normally expect uh, to be given something momentous to pass on, because they were kind of outsiders in society, uh, people living on the margins, uh, not really thought to have the kind of occupation which was at the center of God's purposes. And yet that is a deception, it's a, a kind of... Uh, establishment myth because the shepherds and shepherding are very much part of what God does and have very much been part of what God has done from the very beginning but of course they they don't fit in with an urban myth of the of the elite being the people who hold the strings of power and who live in the the big houses the big palaces and who are the celebrities of our age and that is very much part of the great message of the gospel, and uh, uh, particularly of Luke's gospel, that God wants to uh, remind us all that his gospel uh, is universal. It is for everyone, and it is above all, perhaps, for the poorest. It is a gospel which is countercultural, a gospel which uh, reminds us all of our roots and reminds us also of God's care for the marginalized, for the poorest, for those who get overlooked in the way society moves forward and people claw their way to the top and then try to direct things. Because after all, Jesus himself comes of good shepherding stock. We learn and we're reminded again in the gospel that he is of the line of David. And David, whilst he went on to be a great king and was the writer of many of the Psalms, and we associate him also with music and as being God's right-hand man in many things, but of course not perfect as well. We only recall the Bathsheba incident, for example. But he began as a shepherd, as an extraordinary shepherd, as one uh, after God's own heart. And he, in effect, uh, becomes one of the great models behind uh, John chapter 10 and the image we have there of Jesus as the good shepherd of the one who is willing and is going to lay down his life for the sheep. So that when the angels come to shepherds on hillsides, yes, they are marginless because of the way society has moved on and has become urbanized, but they are also very much at the center of of God's plan. They were also keeping watch over their flock at night, which is a reminder to us all, say, in these difficult, dark times, that we, as shepherds of one another, and have our, our, our bishops and our ministers looking after us in the darkness of these times, and that uh, the light has shone again, uh, reminding us of, uh, of all that came at Christmas and all that Christmas means, but also that there is light at the end of the, the COVID tunnel and of all the other tunnels uh, into which we have moved uh, ourselves. And we recall, of course, uh, the Old Testament, the, the great shepherd figures of Moses himself uh, working under his uh, father-in-law Jethro uh, in the wilderness before he returns to, to be the leader of the people, leading those people as a Middle Eastern shepherd striding before them through the desert, through the pathless wilderness to bring them to a land which God had promised where they will be provisioned and nurtured and fed and shepherded by the God who is also the God of uh, Psalm 23, for example, that much beloved Psalm which many of us can cite from heart. So God speaking to shepherds, speaks to us, and God is the shepherd who speaks to us. And I'm uh, recalling also a wonderful passage I'm reading recently in the story of Joseph, which I hadn't expected, but uh, here we have uh, uh, old Jacob blessing the children of Joseph just before he's about to die uh, in a foreign land in Egypt. But he's reminding Joseph of the lowly origins. Joseph, yes, you have become this great man in Egypt, but let's recall that we all have uh, origins in shepherding peoples. 
he prays, May the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, uh, the angel who has delivered me from all harm, may he bless these boys. And so he goes on to bless Manasseh and Ephraim. But note again that wonderful uh, combination of angel and shepherd that the God himself, who has been his guiding light, is also a shepherd, and that, that uh, Jesus himself is coming above all as a shepherd, as a self-sacrificing shepherd uh, in the line of the great shepherds of Israel. Amen. I'll turn to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue in prayer. Perhaps if you're using this service, listening to this service on Christmas Eve or at midnight or during uh, the night, yeah, the phrasing of these particular prayers may be particularly meaningful, but uh, whether or not we think of them as uh, being sad at night, they're also uh, a way of thinking of the uh, the shepherds keeping watch at night and reminding us that the momentous event did begin uh, under cover of darkness. Let's pray. Father, in this holy night, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human form. Renew your church as the body of Christ. In this holy night, Christians the world over are celebrating his birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us today. In this holy night, there was no room for your son in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. In this holy night, Mary, in the pain of labor, brought your son to birth. Hold in your hand all who are in pain or distress today. In this holy night, your Christ came as a light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to all who suffer in the sadness of our world. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption. In this holy night, the angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in all the world. In this holy night, strangers found the holy family and saw the babe lying in the manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. 
in this holy night. Heaven is come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Keep in safety all those who have gone through death in the hope of heaven. In this holy night, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Blessed Mary and all the saints. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. You are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that he may evermore dwell in us, and he in us. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here, his Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. So with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper he took the cup, when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death. We celebrate his resurrection and ascension and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy church, and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. The same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Continue with our blessing. May the Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world share that love upon you, his children. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with joy and peace. May the Holy Spirit, by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer, give you grace to carry the good news of Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Recalling our gospel reading of the visitation of the uh, the angel and the host of angels to the shepherds on the hillside announcing the birth of Christ's child in Bethlehem. Uh, let's recall uh, the, the words of that great favourite uh, Christmas hymn, uh, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the Realms of Glory, wing your flight or all the earth, ye who sang creation's story. Now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship Christ, the newborn King. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night, God with us is now residing. Yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship Christ, the newborn King. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship Christ, the newborn King. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. Saints, before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear, suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship Christ, the newborn King. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. Though an infant now we view him, he shall fill his Father's throne, gather all the nations to him. Every knee shall then bow down. Come and worship Christ, the newborn King. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King.